Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret, and I am on my way to New Jersey to attend the Foam Pro Tour Qualifier 2 in an attempt to compete at the Dirt Zone Pro Tournament in July of this year. To briefly summarize, this qualifier is a 5v5 competitive event using foam dart blasters. Your team can have two alternates for a total of 7 players the day of the event, and blasters are allowed to fire up to 200 FPS for flywheelers and 250 FPS for springers. Matches are won by whichever team scores two points first. You can earn one point by eliminating the opposing team, in which a hit is counted anywhere on your player's body, blaster, or gear. You can also earn a point if at the end of the two minute round, your team has more players on the field. A tie in players will yield no points, and a tie score at the end of three rounds will trigger a 1v1 to determine the winner. There might be a third way to score a point by running into the opposing team's goal, but it is not currently in the rules, so I can't confirm it yet. 250 foam darts of your choice are allocated to a team for each matchup, and can be divided between players as desired. No picking up darts on the field until the match is over. We're expecting brackets for team matchups with double elimination, meaning if we do lose a game, it's not game over just yet. And as for teams, Archer and I are bringing our 2019 Paradox roots to a new Paradox team. This time everyone other than myself is currently local to the East Coast, so only I have the opportunity to fly about five hours across the United States. If it weren't too small, this is a look. <laughs> if you uh, drop it at any point, I may just have to pick it up. You heard it here, folks. I made it. I'm in New Jersey now. I've never been in New Jersey before. You and it's it. also been over a decade since I've been on this part of the East Coast. Basically, if it weren't for this a beret person on my Where? on my left uh this wouldn't all be happening so huge shout out to archer <laughs> basically making this whole trip possible i basically kind of threw the idea your way but you took it and ran once you were like mm -hmm. yeah i think i could make the second qualifier yeah yeah i think i'll do that you know what i've got all it, these people in mind too it's competing and i haven't seen you in ages so you know, why not and okay. now she's assumed my identity i got my new paradox Show jersey that off. Show which it off. is a nice, very nice material. Mm -hmm. So just getting that on makes it feel a lot more real. Basically seeing the rest of the team tomorrow is gonna make it feel mm -hmm. the most real. And seeing another team. Dinner yes. arrangements with uh, Magic Smoke, a fellow Maryland group, Nerf group that I have played with uh, in the past. I travel down there a lot. Just a big traveling day for me, mm -hmm. which is what happens when you gotta go west coast to east coast. I've committed to this one. I'm here, the event will go on, and I will do my darn best. And I'm gonna bring hype, your cat hype, as hype, the next hype, hype man. Hype, hype, I'm gonna go find him. Oh. I'm gonna go find him. Keep it going. I'm What's a cat him. doing? This video is sponsored by Darts. I'm just kidding. Dart Zone didn't actually sponsor anything here. Remember, just because they sent me a hat and a gift basket, they have not given me any additional information. I'm going in just as blind as everyone else. The cat. He's <laughs> hating life right now. <laughs> Why would you make me do this? Brilliant. <laughs> Mascot. <laughs> He's Boop. hating me right now. The next morning I went outside because it was nice, then promptly went back inside for a nap. Then I admired all of Archer's jerseys and blasters, but when I couldn't convince the cat to play with me, I decided to film this. Let's talk about my loadout for tomorrow. These are the two blasters I brought. Both of these have been sent to me by Dart Zone. Again, thank you very much to them for doing that. I'm not required to use this. Again, Dart Zone just sent it to me if I was interested, I guess I am. Now I have a backup one should anything happen. It's a stock Mark III. There's nothing special about this. I'm going to be using AA batteries. I think this is gonna be an interesting testing opportunity for something like the Mark III in a competition to see, is this what the cost of entry is? For, you know, slightly modified performance, does the Mark III at 130 United States dollars basically set the limit for what you have to spend to compete? The cost of entry for a pro, pro grade Springer, can't speak this morning, is a lot lower. This Mark III as well is just going to be using the Mark III magazines because I got a pack of three more. And with these two blasters, I have five of them. 
I haven't made any mods to this, so I'm using the ones that definitely work in this blaster. It does shoot a little under 160 FPS, so it's not that 200 FPS flywheel cap. I kind of was going to bring my Lynx as a Springer alternative, but I don't think I'm gonna be using a Springer. I showed off my new jersey as well. This is my short sleeve version. We've got nice Paradox logo on the front and beret on the back. Devils, Nerf Works, and Archer put this together. Devils did our original one, which I do have. It's the long sleeve from Paradox 2019. And we brought back the similar stylings for this jersey. I absolutely love it. They did a fantastic job. Of course, I'll have my orange beret to match as well. I got a little hashtag pro dart on there too. And then as far as a few other specifics, I have three different pairs of eye protection. I don't know typically what my preferred eye protection will be until the day of. So what I do have is these mesh goggles. I've just kind of liked that option, especially when wearing a mask, it doesn't fog it up. So kind of nice. And then of course I've got clear eye protection and then just darker pairs. I've used all of them. It really just depends on what I'm feeling day of in the moment. Otherwise, I've got my tactical pants, which if you've played with me between like 2017, 2019, you probably recognize these as my usual game pants. Nothing too special there. The same pair, just with some new inserts for my knees because turf will definitely like some extra padding down there. And I'm probably gonna be just putting the magazines in my back pockets because the pockets are big and they work. So why overcomplicate it with mag holders, you know? And then some good shoes for also uh, matching that field so I can actually get some good grip. I think they're like kind of between cleats and just like regular running shoes. I don't know exactly how you'd classify them, but they have a little bit extra grip on the bottom. And I'll probably be showing you a picture right now of what it all looks like. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but that's kind of how I like my competitive loadout to be. Everyone's loadout is going to be a little bit different and that's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a personal preference. This is what I think works for me. When I'm running super fast, I like to have as little gear on me as possible. I am at least not bringing something stupid like this. I am taking this somewhat seriously, guys. Still doesn't work. Oh my God, I brought you all the way from the West Coast you still don't work. We arrived at our hotel early in the evening and promptly dropped off all of our gear. It was here that our team was finally assembled in person for the first time. And joining us was Team Magic Smoke and Team Frumble. After a toast to our dearly missed friend Thomas of Containment Crew, I received an important message from our event organizer. I have texted Drac and received word. I asked, how is the field looking? And he said, Strong. <laughs> yes. 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 Not a man of many words. Yo, how, how strong is the field? Strong. So strong. You know how to be confident in it. You know how you get a strong field? You go out there every day and you just sprinkle protein powder. <laughs> And if that's inside information, you can sue me. Or Drac. I don't know, leave me alone. People, <laughs> the team is here. Officially our first team meeting and our last team meeting. <laughs> of the day at least, well, but yeah. Why don't we do this next year? Okay, next year, there's always, there's always more. Yes, we, we just got back from Applebee's. Oh my God, it's another teammate. Yo! I mean, now we're just gonna talk a little bit about what's coming up and then we're gonna go to bed. At this point, it seems appropriate to actually introduce the FPT Q2 Paradox team using a picture from the future. Jeremy, Sam, Jason, Jed, Brandon, Neil, and me. Bert. Right. <laughs> like it says it too in my head. I'm so okay. <laughs> oh, like this, whole time. this is the pump skewer. Yes, <laughs> we did talk a little strategy to close off the night, but without knowing the exact field layout until tomorrow, it wasn't worth wasting our efforts in excessive speculation. Some good sleep and an early rise was our best plan. Run. Saturday began with everyone waking up before their alarms. Morale was high as the espresso shots and nail polish were flowing. Separately, of course.
game day. They're packing stuff. I had a shot of espresso. Never had a straight shot of espresso. I'm awake now. So awake I could jump over all these stairs. Ready to actually take to the field and play with some folks. Maybe I'll have a cookie as well. No, no, I shouldn't do that. No cookie. No breakfast cookie. No breakfast cookie. No. Well, if everyone's doing it, then peer pressure wins. It didn't take long to get to the field, and due to our timeliness, we were the first team on site. Sc uh, scratch that. We were the first people there for the event, and the guy at the front desk said we could go in. So we did. <laughs> Me breaking into the phone pro tour. What is that? Where's Lord Bionicle? What is, what is the end there? They're not here yet, let's go. They're not, wait, they're not here yet? They're not here yet! <laughs> first on the field! So, first impressions, the field is different. The field is definitely different. So we've got the diamond actually spread out this time, and then one single piece of cover in between it. Hey look! Oh no. The bus stop! There are multiple bus stops. Yo, check out this bus stop! Bus stop. Waiting for the bus over here. The official dirt. The bus coming in! <laughs> 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 Here at Dart Zone, we preach quality. We get to events early enough so that you don't have to. Now that we had the field layout, we could actually talk strategy. It looked something like this, which thankfully had more pieces of cover than the previous event and a little more space between them. I don't think I'd ever played on a turf field before, so it was nice to run around a little bit and practice some slides before others could judge me. After some time, more teams did start showing up, along with the event staff. Some folks from Dart Zone, including the CEO Brian, were there to set up a display and firing booth with Pro Blasters. By 10 a.m., registration was closed, and all nine teams were signed in with their blasters chronographed. And back to the carrier, um, you can kind of expect me to provide advice and talk. And tell them. The ever important rules briefing had brought a few changes. Three minute rounds instead of two, and scoring in another team's goal was indeed possible. A challenge double elimination bracket was set up to show the day's progression, and yes, we were in the first match. It's starting, and of course we're first, because that's how life goes. Rules have been clarified, we can score by running into the end zone, so that changes a little bit. But yeah, three minute round, and of course if we lose this one, we get to fight our way back. No pressure at all. As a general FYI, there's a lot of match footage from various angles, and basically all of the Paradox match footage is from other people. I'll be sure to credit my teammates and others who provided the footage because while I played every single round, I do not like to wear a GoPro when playing competitive. Yes, our first match against Rochester Radioactive resulted in a loss after three rounds. We forced that third round by timing out the second with an equal number of players on both sides, so no point was awarded. I was a bit disappointed in myself because I got tagged out way too early in each round and with a lot of ammo left to use. But there was no point in beating ourselves up. These were literally the first rounds of the day and the first time all of us were playing together and using our alternates on the sidelines. 
the crowd was also going nuts, making it near impossible to hear or convey any information to our teammates. Well, not the ideal first round, but it was fun. We'll work our way back, and uh, I hopefully won't get another jam, because my Mark III did jam on me when I fired too fast. But now we're watching some of the other games. Hopefully we'll learn a little bit from those two. Three minute rounds are a lot as well. It's a lot more time to actually adapt and uh, change things up, but I'm still very proud of our team. Even if we didn't win our first one, we know what we're doing. <laughs> we played hard. Neil oh, Neil ran hard. <laughs> Poor guy. Was it Rochester home dartly? Rochester, yeah. yeah. I think they have home field advantage. Is that like a nice thing to say or a way just to be extra salty about our loss? <laughs> it gives us a reason not to kick ourselves in the tail so hard. Absolutely. <laughs> independent Observer here. Hey, Independent Observer. First round, you got you, I'll, I'll be honest, they got you guys good, but then like the second, third, you made them work for it. It was like yep. neck and neck. Once you're like, time to snap in there. So that means we can only go up. Yes. Yes. After each team played their first game, we welcomed a few more into the lower brackets. The only matchup that didn't go 2-0 was A-Team versus Magic Smoke, and after a running comeback by the A-Team, Magic Smoke found themselves matched up against Paradox to start off the elimination rounds. Oh shoot, that's us. But in a decisive show of drive, power, staying hungry, and devout, what the? we won. We went 2-0 against Magic Smoke, and boy was it a morale boost. It was also nice at this point that all of our teammates had gotten to play. Our communication was a lot better this time, and I felt like I actually contributed. Yay! Team Epic Villains was our third matchup, and once again, we pulled through with a 2-0 victory. We played our second round in the loser's bracket, and we are freaking not out yet. And this man with the strategies for days, this, this dude, <laughs> that dude, not affiliated with them at all. He doesn't all. know their plays. <laughs> we were obviously a little bit nervous to go 0-2 with um, rounds, because that would have meant we're out completely, but no. We're still in, and we just played our previous one as well. Won that 2-0. Another game soon against whoever loses uh, the next game and joins us in the loser's bracket. We're still one game away from being eliminated, but at this point, at least we've all been able to play a few rounds, and it has been a good time. My only request would be a few more refs, because they're covering with four refs and four quadrants, and I don't think that's enough. And I am not alone in that, but hey, we're making it work. In the field tactical was our fourth game of the day, and once again, Paradox pulled through with a 2-0 victory. Yeah. 
Watching the other games was a lot of fun, but it was tough to balance the casual watch versus watching as a team versus don't watch, we need to talk strategy. I'm glad the camaraderie was high because while everyone wasn't openly sharing their upcoming strategies, we were still watching together and making comments together in a constructive way. People were here to play hard and potentially win some money, but also have fun and I think most people I interacted with had that mentality. Everyone here was a foam flinging enthusiast and many others, not just me, traveled great distances for this opportunity to compete. At this point, four teams were left and we found ourselves up against the A team for our fifth match of the day. After three solid rounds, the A team wound up on top. They took the first round by stopping a last hope goal run, we took the second by clapping back hard, and they took the third by forcing me to move out of an awful spot due to having a one player advantage. It looks bad on footage, it felt worse in person. It's all the way over there and it's a stock mark three. Grab this mark three. I could. I mean, I did earlier. No one will know. Let's go dark zone. Yay, my blaster. I did nothing, so I would look at everything. I love all the blasters I got to see. Now I know that is not true. Pyramid. So the Canadians beat us because they're from Canada. I think that's why. Are we trying the pyramid method? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I am not a bottom pyramid. I am a top pyramid. I am a fragile wildflower. What are you doing? What's going on here? Hi, YouTube. How's it going? It's the guy who beat us. If you can't tell, we've had a good time even though we just got knocked out. The Canadians finally got to play us. The A team reigned supreme. Hey, hey, hey. Are you sorry? This is all in good fun, all in good spirit. And oh, the camaraderie today guy. has been it's excellent. It's another YouTube. Hey, yes. hey Brent, look behind you. It's look another behind. YouTube. Oh my god, is that Lord Bionicle? <laughs> Win or lose, it's not a big deal. It's about having fun. And we have seen some amazing teams today. And I hope to see more of them in the future. Everyone's watching me now, and it's a little awkward because it's awkward to do this in public. We should turn it around so that way everybody can see what we're doing. So. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend they don't know that. I'm very happy that I was able to go to this event, and I am so proud of our team. I have a question. Are you strong? <laughs> is the, the, field the field is strong? Field, I think the field is We're strong. We're very strong. Oh, I spent two hours on it. I think it is a strong. I think it's a good <laughs> we got a few more matches to play, and maybe we'll get some pickup games yeah, afterwards. We'll Just more play. He killed it play. like he always does. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get up now, and I'm there saying that to the people around me too. Not my <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This has been an experience. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, help me. I'm dying. There we go. Oh, goodbye, yeah. world. Muscles. <laughs> oh, oh no! Take no. oh, it back! He took us to Canada! Stop it! Stop it! Don't forget your passport! If you win with Hold that, <laughs> I have contributed. <laughs> you guys are just cool. <laughs> In the end, Rochester Radioactive took first place and Frumble took second. Thus was the curse of brackets. The team that beat us in our first round ended up going 5 0 in games and only ever losing one match. Both teams now have an invite to the Dart Zone Pro Tournament, and even the Dart Zone newsletter confirms this.
What was my last update? So we we didn't win. I think I said that. Good news is that the team that destroyed us, no, the team that beat us very decently in the first round ended up winning the whole thing. So the Rochester Radioactive team, congrats to you. Look at this dude. Look at this dude. We did a couple pickup games afterwards, which were nonsensical for the most part and probably caused me the most sweating of the day. I did backflips, I did front flips. There was Boomco involved, there was Vortex, there were ballistic balls. <laughs> I used a skewer and I dropped my mag a lot. It was my skewer and he dropped it. And I dropped it a lot. A lot. A lot. Those pickup games were brutal. See that mark on my cheek? Not a single shot to the face all day and then bam. Even a week later, my body is still sore from the unnecessary acrobatics I performed in these 15v15 pickup games. Now my back really hurts, so... Either way, I'm right? a real Nerf Legend, by the way. Oh my gosh, it's a real Nerf Legend. <laughs> is that Nerf Legends available now on most yes. consoles? On and... <laughs> Xbox One, uh, Xbox Series X, PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch. You guys getting this? Toasters. Is this still 50 bucks? Uh. Probably. I still can't believe I spent 40 bucks on that. Neither can I. We live life with regrets, and that I guess is one of them, but to bring it all back, attending today was not a regret. And now it's time to detox a little bit as the field is officially coming down. valuable so that we can take a look at what powers this thing you kind of pop the key in there's a hex key at a 45 here and we'll just take a look t30 3s lipo you know the classic rt d3 lipo pack it looks like rush i don't know what the fps is i'm excited to test it for you guys here this is really less of a formal review because the chronographs of the tournament have been packed up and this is just going to be kind of a, is this fun? Is it cool? More expensive than it needs to be. Is the hex screw ever going to go back in? His draft going to pick up Bruh. the I have a decent I camera, really right? Cannot get I offered. The hex? No, obviously you back in the corners, right? So obviously you need to post. Oh, I can this post the video first. Have you listened to any of his videos? <laughs> I can't. I know, you need to overview. You got to do oh review of tracks. A review of tracks. Traditional talon and it's angled and it's proprietary. It's about that much thinner. I think it's going to be somewhere around, somewhere under 60. Wholesale, which is retail. Uh, you'd be looking anywhere from 70 to 100. We ended the day with a group dinner and some Smash Bros. And then I slept. Leaving our hotel on Sunday, we headed out for one last partial team meal. Then three of us were off for a day of warm weather sightseeing in Philadelphia. We appropriately donned our jerseys at the Rocky Steps so we could train hard for an event that was now over. <laughs> Onlookers had no idea what our jerseys meant, and I would have bet money against them that they couldn't guess that Paradox was a competitive foam flinging team. But their jerseys still looked cool, so who cares? One of our last stops in the city was at a five below, because the franchise doesn't exist where I live, and once we made our way to the cheap toy section, there it was, the last Alpha Strike uppercut. Until this day, I'd never even seen one in person, and now, thanks to Archer, I own one. I guess the real Nerf uppercuts were the alpha strikes we dart zone pro along the way. But boy, was that stupid. Hey, you don't need to see me get home, right? I did make it back. My flight was that evening, and a child kept kicking my seat, and then I actually got home after midnight and still had to work that day, and my throat was still sore from yelling on Saturday. It's almost like I chose this. <laughs> 